What's up, everybody? Welcome to a Transfer Tuesday edition of like, the pod like the that now of that. takes place in the portal rather than the palace, <laughs> which is shut down until November. Is that how we're rolling with this now? I, I liked Ellis's suggestion of the pod in the portal. Pod in the portal? Yeah. We I can like make, it. We can make that switch in Canva real easy. Yeah, for sure. That's what we're working with. Curtis Wilkerson here, by the way, joined as always by my co-host, Scotty Borderline. Here from the United States Sports Studios in Fayetteville, um, nothing has popped yet, uh, but it has been another eventful day of portaling, and we've got some interesting tidbits, updates to share with you guys like we promised, uh, and we plan on wrapping up by uh, maybe throwing out our, our top five list. We're going to start doing this at the end of all these episodes. We're just going to have our top fives um, of particular positions at the portal. We're going to go with the big men today, so look forward to that at the end I wrote of this thing. Top five big boys. B O I B O I boy boys yeah we need <laughs> I some, like it like you said we need some meatballs yeah yeah Arkansas or at least needs some, guys some meatballs with some, with some junk to them yes they need a little bit of everything honestly but they definitely got to mm-hmm. get some uh, some thick boys down there in the paint next year because it was a little bit sweet in the lane this past season for the Razorbacks um, but before we get too far into just you know portal prospects and everything like that just wanted to I don't know maybe touch on just some early portal returns like some feedback that we've received um, and, then, and then talk a little bit of NIL Razorback specific and then also big picture because it's just uh, it's weird <laughs> and it's a little bit crazy uh, with some of the things going on in college basketball right now um, so with that being said uh, just some general notes that I've kind of gathered that I thought would be worthwhile to share and, and kind of bounce some of this stuff off Scotty and see what he thinks about it um, but for starters just full disclosure and transparency, like it sounds like there's been quite a bit of negative recruiting going on towards Arkansas, which, hey, like that's not entirely unexpected. Uh, It happens everywhere, especially when you're coming off a tough season like Arkansas is. Uh, You just have to overcome that. Like that's kind of part of the deal. Um, But like I've, I've heard that there's been some concerns raised about maybe a lack of development um, from, from last year's players, transfers, um, which is fair because, you know, in, in some cases like Arkansas, they missed on some of those guys. Yeah. And, you know, I think you're in a, a position where maybe you have to really hammer home. Yeah. But have you seen Tremont Mark or, or the end of Caleb battle season or everybody the last three or four years? Um, but, you know, that's been a thing I, that I've, I've heard they've been working through a little bit. Um, and I've also had, you know, some people who have said that there have been questions raised about some of the drama, you know, that with this team uh, this past season, whether it be guys just kind of randomly disappearing, which is, you know, Devo or Keon Minifield or even Graham, like his yeah. academic absences or, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, this stupid love triangle nonsense yeah. uh, that that just stirred like wildfire and you know like players hear about that stuff and other schools aren't going to hesitate to use it as ammo um and so that's it's 100% just right yeah so that like it's just some things that you know Arkansas has got a they've got a work pass like it's just an obstacle in the way you mm-hmm. know of, of maybe landing some guys and yeah it's just kind of where we they're were at talking early. back and forth last night texting and um I went back and pulled up what I wrote you and it, like I said it's it's I said, that's so wild. Yep. It really is. And it, it's like the most 2024 thing <laughs> yeah. to me. Um, and I, I told you last night, like, it's easy for us, I feel like, to blow that BS off and like, bro, there's just, come on now. You know, mm-hmm. like. As you should. And yeah, you blow it off and you keep moving ahead. But the thing that I don't think I thought about was, um, how widespread like the the drama and the rumors got true um i mean it was like daily i would get on youtube to check out our numbers and stuff um you know back a few weeks ago and the 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 youtube recommended videos like obviously i'm heavy arkansas on youtube watching stuff and so i get youtube recommended videos and it's like a national type person Mm -hmm. doing a video like is this arkansas love triangle real Right. And it's blowing up. Yeah. And so, of course, kids are going to see it. And kids these days are, they probably don't want to, they don't want to get caught up in that stuff. Right. Oh, yeah, for so sure. Like, it, it's it something that you at least re- think, like, if you hear about it, yeah, it, it raises a red flag. And it's frustrating because it's it's bullshit. Yeah. Like the, that, that whole situation was just, it's just cap. And, uh, 
so I, I hate that it's even a thing. Um, but you know, it's just, just part of the deal. Like, you know, that you have to work through, um, it's a cutthroat business out there. So yeah. if, like if other teams that have lost, you know, in recruiting battles with you in the past, like anything they can use for ammo, uh, they're going to do that, man. And it's don't crazy. Get me wrong. Like there's levels to the negative recruiting. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Big levels. Yes. hundred percent, man. Um, but there's still plenty of interest in Arkansas. You know, maybe not at the level it has been in the past years, which that was just going to happen when you have a down year. Like, it's a it's a hell of a lot easier to recruit when you're coming off an Elite Eight, you know, uh, as opposed to being 16, 17 and just sitting at home watching when, when other teams are in March Madness. Uh, so not the level of, of past seasons maybe, but still plenty of interest there, and, and they still seem poised, um, I think, to, to make a splash here sooner rather than later. Um, will it happen this week? Boy, that'd be cool if it did. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit, but I, I think they're going to get on the board here fairly soon. Um, and like Arkansas, they've got a couple things that I think they really have to focus on with their pitch right now. The first is playing time. Right. Right. I mean, like th- there might not be any holdovers to compete with for minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, there's starting spots that can be given away and, and you know, m- you know, minutes guarantees, even though they probably don't like to do that kind of thing. Uh, but that's all there on the table if that's something they want to do. Uh, but the second thing, though, and, and the most important thing, honestly, it, this matters more than any negative recruiting, any pitch you can give, any, you know, off-the-wall visits that you can have. It's NIL. Like, that's that's it right now. Yep. And there's been some interesting stuff servicing about that. And I know I shared this with you. Uh, Jeff Goodman tweeted out, and listen, I get he's full of crap half the time, uh, but he tweeted out yesterday that six schools out of the Big East Conference passed out over $2 million in NIL to their rosters last season. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And of those six, only three of them made the NCAA tournament. Holy cow. So, it's like that tells you like that's the cost of doing business yeah. nowadays. Um, for what it's worth, Arkansas was not rocking with that level of a bag. They just weren't like the the previous year with Nick and Anthony Black and Jordan Walsh. Yeah, sure. This past year, no. Like they they were just not at that level. Um, they're going to need more to work with to rebuild this roster because the asking prices are crazy. And that's the other part of this. Like, just in general, I'm not even talking necessarily about like guys Arkansas is contacted right away or whatever, but. You, you've been seeing a lot of national guys who've been putting it out there saying, like, some of the asking prices are not realistic. Like, it's, you know, I've heard anywhere from two to 400,000 for a, for a high major point guard. Yeah. And, you know, big men, like legit ones, that's, that, they come at a premium, dude. Like, that's penthouse money. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy, man. So, like, you're looking at like Hunter Dickinson last year. Oh, yeah. Was, you know, probably getting offers thrown at him a million plus. Yeah. Yeah, easy, legitimately, and and it's it's interesting the way it works because you hear a lot of time like I heard you know, like for some of the guys that signed at Arkansas last year it was like oh this dude's getting three hundred k that dude's getting three hundred k, yeah like in a lot of cases like anything you hear you can probably cut it in at least half of what reality is, um, but the problem is you see all that stuff thrown out there on social media then you or or I get to the off season the next year and go shoot. I heard those numbers, and then those are your actual asking prices when it starts out. And yeah. some people are stupid enough to pay it early on, which is which is what's interesting about all this. So I don't know, man. Like I, I remember sitting on John's show a few weeks ago, and he was asking like how much NIL money is required to build a like a championship caliber roster. And I said three to five million right. at the time. And some people in the chat they were like, What? Well, there you go. That's I mean, it. I think that that's probably about where you need to be. Like Arkansas probably needs to be bare minimum in the ballpark of of that range or the bottom end of that range or whatever, uh, just to get back to where they want to be, not just nationally, but in an SEC that produces more draft picks than any league in the country. Like the SEC has dudes. Right. And Arkansas has got to go get dudes, but they're going to have to pay to get them. And it's going to be interesting, fascinating almost, to see how – must builds out this roster, Scotty, because it's almost like playing that game where they give you 15 bucks to build a lineup. Yeah. And like players cost between one and five dollars and you've only got so much to spend. Like Arkansas is gonna have to to pay up to get dudes. 
but they're also going to have to be like really. They're going to have to get some one dollar guys. Yes, and they're going to have to be really, really savvy and, um, man, just just smart and thorough about how they build out that yeah. depth on the back end with those kind of guys. Are they going to have to put together a money ball roster? It might be a money ball roster. <laughs> it really, yeah, it really might be. It's a great way to like put it. The, the negative recruiting and stuff. Maybe a kid's like, "Hey, I can maybe look some past some of this if this dollar amount can be met." Right. And you might end up just like overpaying for him. Right. And so yeah. that that's really tough. But there's a there's a story uh, from on three today that came out, and there's some really interesting quotes in here. Especially there's some SEC coaches quoted in this Ooh, okay um from recruiting in the portal in order of importance i believe it's i believe nil is 1a and opportunity to play is 1b that's, that makes me feel smart about what i just said I <laughs> that's one of the quotes another coach said i would say to really compete in the portal slash nil era as a power six school you've got to have 1.5 million or more okay all right um he and then a uh, coach in the big east said this, and then another coach in the SEC had a similar quote, um, probably about $150,000 is the average cost for a starter at a Power 6 school. Whew. So that's just like an average right? Average Joe. And that's, just an that's average coaches starter. who are in the middle of it. Understand, of yeah, it. like what it actually takes. Yeah. And that's probably something that it's, and that's a crazy amount of money anyway, but that's probably something that a story that maybe these kids hitting the portal right now need to read because – they're asking for a lot more than that yeah. right away. Um, and so that, that, that's that's fascinating. That's a very fascinating read. Um, there's another quote. There's a, 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 I guess you'd call it a heading in here. What's the biggest numbers you've heard? Uh, an SEC coach said, I'm not sure the biggest, but I have heard there are a couple of schools that have between 2.5 and 3 million in NIL. Yeah. That's from an, an SEC coach. There you go. That's what they're competing with. Right. And it's tough. Yeah. So, yeah, it might be a. Unless there's bags to be had, it might be a Moneyball roster, right? Which Eric has talked about Moneyball a lot. Yes, he you know, has. He's man. actually you know brought up Billy Bean a lot with us in the past, so mm -hmm. um, maybe that's the route they take. If he does, I'm I'm sure he'll have a very calculated plan for it. Yeah, and so I, and and I don't know, you know, what I do know is they didn't have maybe the type of of nil that they needed or wanted or people thought they had. That's probably the better way to put it. They didn't have the type of bag that people thought they had. Uh, this past year going into this offseason, like, I don't know, uh, because it, it's kind of I can see it from both sides. Like on one hand, you, you have a losing season and it's, hey, we need more NIL to get back to where, you know, we want to be and whatever. Uh, and then on the other hand, like people are probably looking at it like the people who would donate to it or, you know, boosters. I, like, I don't know, like Arkansas Edge. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. But anybody who could provide said NIL funds might be looking at it going. Yeah, we need to see the results. You know, Absolutely. like before, yeah. you know, like we've contributed that, this before yeah. and what, you know what I mean? And that's where you throw the previous three years in their exactly. face. Exactly. You know, exactly. And I think they need to do that in terms of uh, generating the type of NIL backing that they need. And also talking to these recruits saying, yep, this past year sucked and it didn't go the way we wanted to. It's a blip on the radar. That's man. what I was like, going to say. Tell them it was a blip on the radar and yep. just trust, trust what we're going to do. And then the you full have to, you body have of to work. Go, yeah. You got to go shove it. This, exactly. This next season. Yes, 100%. So we'll see what happens there um, with all that. But uh, what we do know for sure is like they're they're going to get guys like they're they're going to fill out this roster and uh, it's going to start happening soon. Um, and so, you know, a, a lot of new names that have surfaced on Tuesday. Actually, before we do that, um, we spoke at length yesterday about UNC big man, uh, UNC Greensboro, big man, Mikhail Brown Jones um, and Drexel's big fella, Amari Williams. Uh, both guys that entered the portal that we liked. Brown Jones, is, he's the second guy we ever put on this board. Um, no sooner than we stopped recording, Arkansas, it came out that Arkansas <laughs> has been in touch with both of those guys. Naturally. Shocker. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, but did want to hit on that. Um, friend of the board, Chauncey Jenkins, who's right behind you over your uh, over your left shoulder there. Yeah, he was number six on the board. Yep, Old Dominion Cat uh, is officially portaling, so I would anticipate Arkansas gets involved there, Yep, uh, which is good to know. Um, he had, if you're wondering, 21.7 rebounds, three assists against Arkansas. Yeah, the yeah, John Morant's twin. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like I, look I told exactly you when like. I put him up there, <laughs> that's why his, his build is John Morant, because there's there are Instagram reels and TikToks and tweets <laughs> and stories written about how they're twins, basically. Yeah. And they look identical. Yes, 
And he's a nice player. So I, I, I do hope Arkansas uh, is after him and pursues him. I would imagine they'll at least make a phone call there. Um, and so that's the good news. The bad news, man, uh, regret to inform everyone uh, that we have to remove Tennessee Martin wing Jacob Cruz from the board. He is committed to <sighs> Missouri. Yeah. Um, you know, I was excited about the potential there with Cruz. He was a guy that, that I exchanged some messages with, and, and I think there was uh, definitely some interest there. Yeah, that's what he just committed to. Shout out to Dennis Gates, uh, who hasn't won a game all year for, for getting a hell of a pickup in the portal. Um, I don't know, man. It's tough. Uh, I know that they really, really liked his ability to stretch the floor and shoot the ball, uh, but I think I, I think I texted you fairly early last night uh, to, to tell you, like it just it sounded like Arkansas maybe wasn't all the way there yet with that one, um, and the dude was ready to pop early. He was. So they missed he? out. Yeah. yeah, middle of the afternoon on on day two. Yeah, um, I think he would have been a really nice get for Arkansas, but you know they got specific things in mind, and I'm sure Missouri had a healthy amount of NIL to throw at him, and sure. I, they're in a similar situation where it's like, hey, dude, look at. Look at our roster. You know, like you can come to the SEC and play a lot right away, um, whether we stink or not. So, what um, do you think about a kid popping on day two? That seems a lot like you know marrying the first girl that you ever went out with. Yeah, no, it, it definitely does. Either that, or it's like you kind of had your mind made up. Yeah. Before you entered, but I don't think that was the case with him, just based on my interactions with him. Uh, but yeah, he must have just liked what he heard and. There you go. So Jacob Cruz off the board. Dennis Gates and made that pitch, boy. He was probably on that list of, you know, five or six guys, you know, thinking about, you know, somebody that Arkansas might be able to pick up early on in the process. He was definitely on that list for me. So, um, you know, whatever. You move on to the next. And they've been, in, you know, involved with uh, probably a half dozen other wings who kind of fit the same mold today. So right. <laughs> maybe we'll just uh, move on to some of the new guys here. Um, we'll start with the top and we'll just kind of, kind of roll through some of these dudes. Uh, Brandon Love out of Texas state. That was the most recent one right before we started recording again. Like for those who are maybe listening to this a little bit later, and I'm sure you will be, it's about four o'clock, um, on Tuesday as, as we're sitting here talking about this. So, uh, naturally, as soon as this hits your feeds, um, all that's still going to be relevant, but there'll probably be new names and, you know, different stuff going on. And if it's super important, we'll, uh, we'll definitely be back with you. But, um, uh, Brandon Love out of Texas state. He's very tall. He's very long. 6'9", 208 pounds. Um, he had some decent stats. I mean, 10 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, 1.4 blocks. I know that he was uh, uh, pretty high up there on the block rate percentage yeah. um, in the country, like just outside of the top yeah, 100 maybe. Um, nice player. I mean, I don't think this would be a, you know, if Arkansas really, really pursued it and got him, um, wouldn't be a game changer, but I mean – you don't have any forwards. Like, you, yeah. you don't have anybody in your front court. When, um, when he popped up, I, I looked over to you and I said he would block He would block some shots and he would grab some offensive rebounds for exactly. you. Exactly, yeah. And, like, again, like, to go back to what we were talking about, about your, your build-a-bear roster, like, mm. you, you're you going to have to get guys <laughs> who fit a role and, like, that yeah. would be his. Um, for his build, we have him as Ethan Henderson uh, because it's very similar, like, very tall, very long, kind of skinny, um, but he, I mean, he plays with some physicality in there, like yeah. watching his film. I agree with that. Uh, but he's a Houston native. He had four double doubles on the season. Uh, just looking at some of his games against big opponents, like he had six points, five blocks um, at Oklahoma, uh, scored 14 points, grabbed four rebounds at Texas. So, you know, um, he had some decent games there, but Arkansas made contact with him today. Um, and then also one of his teammates. So it's like I guess it was just like Texas State Day for the for somebody on the Razorback staff. Yeah, who, who, you think that's a Ruta job or nah? That might be Mike Muss, who's maybe, making those calls. Like maybe so. Yeah, call call the Texas State guy. Like Texas is your state of the day. Um, Davion Sykes, this one's kind of interesting to me. Yeah, the Duncanville um, angle. The Duncanville angle. Yeah, this guy, guy who went to Duncanville High School. So I we are very aware of the. Uh, the connections there, Arkansas has done well uh, with Duncanville guys in the past, Sands, Ron Holland, um, you know, but there's some good relationships to be had there. Uh, man, I don't know, like this dude, he looks the part. I mean, he's not a bad little player. Yeah, I mean, we got his build as Ricky Council. Yeah. That's kind of 
six six two hundred. I don't know that I ran that one by you first, but I would. You know, sometimes when I struggle to come up with builds for some of these guys, what I do is go to Sports Reference, pull up Arkansas's rosters, and I'll just flip through like the last decade to see if there's like a height weight match or something really similar. Right. Uh, and Ricky Council stuck out to me in yeah. terms of, you know, he's he's not skinny. He's not big. He's just he's he's lean. Good frame. Um, yeah, really good frame. Six six two hundred. Um, pretty good on the glass. About seven a game. And uh, it's looking at his his shot chart. He is um, not much for perimeter jumpers. A lot a lot in the lane at the rim, um, and he likes the right elbow. So okay. There's your scout. There you go. <laughs> on Brandon Love must, or on Davion Sykes. Must kind of guy. I mean, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, for a for a big guard, big wing kind of dude, like I mean, six double doubles on the season, mm-hmm. um, put up thirty on Troy. So yeah. you know, top one hundred nationally in defensive rebound rate. So yeah, got a motor. Um, again, not a not a not a star, um, yeah. but if you're looking for guys again who could could fill out some depth, like maybe he's one. So we'll keep an eye on it. Um, before we before we move on to some of these other guys, I just I just got a text here in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, from a from a source that that says uh, Cruz got 400k to go to Mizzou, and so even if that's you know because those things are always inflated early, so even if you cut it in half, that's a lot of money. It's more than the average. Yeah, it's a lot to of money. An SEC coach. So, you know, if you're Arkansas, and it, it's not always just based on like can a dude play, but it's like how does he fit in your system and everything like that. It's like if you're not 100 percent sure, well, you can't be giving up that much, you know, off the top. So yep. Anyway, uh, moving on to other guys Arkansas reached out to today. Jacoby Gillespie, um, I did not get to look into him as much as as you did. Uh, another Belmont kid who at the portal, we talked about uh, you know, Belmont and that program and how well coached they are yesterday, but it seems to me like uh, this dude is a bucket and he gets them in ways maybe you wouldn't expect a 6'1 guard to. Yeah, that's very, very accurate. Okay. Um, I was looking at him, uh, all MVC, second team selection, and one of the most efficient players in the country, like a true shooting percentage near it's sixty six point five percent true shooting percentage. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, shot fifty six point one percent from the field, um, and this was a guy for Belmont. And so it's not like he's off the bench and he's just you know he has games every so often where he goes six for ten or seven for eleven or whatever. He's mm-hmm. he was he was a mainstay for them. Um, top 100 in steal rate and 110th in assist rate. Hey, there we go. So I like both of those things. Looking at his shot chart too, Curtis, this is going to probably blow you away. 6-1, 76.9% finisher at the rim on 91 attempts. I love that, That's man. 6-1. That's, yeah, wow. And in the lane, on other shot, non-rim attempts in the lane, he was 63.5% on 63 shots. Um, not... Crazy numbers from from three, like he's a guy that you probably have to respect from deep. But top mm-hmm. of the key was over fifty five percent on okay. thirty looks. So, kid's yeah, a hooper. That's solid. I mean, one thing Arkansas is absolutely going to have to find is a table setter and a lead guard. Um, and you would like to have somebody who could maybe stop the fall, uh, stop the fall, stop the ball, um, and defend there at that lead guard position. It looks mm-hmm. like he can can kind of do all of those things. So this dude definitely has my interest. Yeah. Um, like, like 80, you know. 87th and still percentage. Yeah. I mean, other guys that we've talked about so far here, um, yeah, maybe, you know, like like sell me on a roll or whatever. But I think this dude can come and, come and help you. I think so, too. You know? something, something that really jumped out looking at his Ken Palm page is normally you don't see a whole lot of guards, like in that top 100 and two-point field goal percentage. Mm-hmm. This kid's top 40 at 6-1. Yeah. He got some stuff to him. I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of stuff than the big boys, but yeah. He, uh, I would imagine if if somebody hit me with some insight on him, he'd probably say he plays bigger than his size. So, right. For like sure. That. Um okay, and another guy who I'm I'm pretty sure we mentioned him yesterday, uh but official contact has been made and honestly, the more research we've done, the more and more I think I might be falling in love with this kid. Uh Kylan Milton Yep. From UAPB, Conway native, 6'4". Um, again, like we touched on on the show yesterday, uh, but Arkansas has reached out, and a lot of schools have. I, I think they need to go get this kid I'm with, you. with the expectation that he can 
he can help them. I yeah. mean, he is, uh, it was numbers are nice 17 points, six and a half rebounds, uh, 2.9 assists per game. Um, third in the country in free throw rate. We talked about it yesterday. Yesterday, I was like, hey, you got to go get him. Like, he, he's done. He's got to be at the top of the board because he scored 34 on Missouri, which I appreciate. Um, but good Lord, man, like he, he had 24 points um, at Oklahoma. And I don't know if anybody on, on Arkansas's team scored 24 against <laughs> Oklahoma this year. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you reach double figures in games at Gonzaga at UConn. So, and you mentioned it yesterday, like, so you think, Oh, UAPB, they're not very good or whatever, but they have to go play legit competition. Like it's what funds their program sure. is getting those, uh, those guarantee checks. So, um, he's a, he's a battle tested dude who could probably become even more efficient, you know, with, with better pieces around him. Yeah. Um, and watching his tape, like. I think it translates, man. Like I, I'm, I'm in on Kylan Milton. Yeah, I am too. I uh, put his. I think we we talked with Ellis. We kind of had a group think. Yes. We, Ellis watched his tape and he was like, "I like this guy better than any other any <laughs> yeah. other player that we've watched today." Yeah, man. Um, and we'd watch. We'd probably cycled through six or seven guys at that point, mm-hmm. and Ellis was Ellis was on board with him. Um, so that's a. I mean, you got to go get him if Ellis likes him. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a take for sure. <laughs> um. Put his build as taller J.D. Note. Yeah. I think we both saw the way he attacks the paint, and he kind of uses – he gets low sometimes on his dribble drives to get an angle to free himself up to get to the rim. Mm-hmm. That's just it's pretty crafty stuff. Uh, I reached out to uh, Tanner Spearman, who's a sports reporter at the Pine Bluff Commercial. Today he gave me some feedback on on Milton. Nice. And he said he was the second leading scorer on a guard led team. So there's basically there were four guards on that team that, that averaged double figures in points. Uh, so super guard driven offense. But what made what made Milton different was he was more likely to drive to the basket while the others shot threes. Milton almost he still almost put up a hundred threes this year. Um, but because he was I mean he was around the basket more um, on both ends really. So mm-hmm. he ended he was this team's second leading rebounder at six four, um, had five double doubles. Uh, he's a member of the Thousand Point Club, okay. and he started started every game for UAPB in, in league play. Yeah, I mean, I he looked good to me, I man. Like him, dude. <laughs> I do like him. Yeah, so I think if you got a guy like that who's been playing in the state, you know, he's from Central Arkansas, like yeah, why not? I and I don't know if he grew up. Did he grow up a hog fan and always dreamed of putting on the Razorback jersey? I don't know. Maybe he did. Or maybe you could sell him on that. <laughs> yeah. Keep putting on for the state, man. Yeah. Get him over here. I, li- I like him a lot. Um, another one, and this is a guy who I think we might need to keep a very close eye on, uh, is DeShane Montgomery out of Mount St. Mary's, uh, another 6'4", 190-pound guard. Um, the reason I say that is because a lot of these guys who I've reached out to, and not, and not all of them respond to you. It's just kind of the way it is. Um, but he was the first one who has hit me back right away and said that was it was Eric Musselman that called me. Like and that. Then, so by the way, for all you people who are wondering what Muss is up to, uh, he wasn't on the phone with Louisville this morning. He was on the phone with Deshane Montgomery. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um and, and so you like to hear that. Uh but we do know like when Muss is the is the point man right away, that it usually means it's like a f- for sure dude that they're in on and that they like. Um, and I think there's a lot to like about this kid. I mean, 13.2 points, three and a half rebounds, two assists, fine. Uh, shot 41% from three. Wasn't a ton of volume there. Um, really, really good above the break, though. Like 40, yeah. 40% or better every spot, like left wing, top of the key, right mm-hmm. wing is well above 40%. There. What I like about him, he was a freshman this year. And he was also, he was the fresh, the Mac rookie of the year or freshman of the year um, in that conference. Um, he scored 22 at Ole Miss. He scored 23 at Georgia, so he's he's given it to the SEC competition there. He scored over 20 in nine games as a freshman, uh, but just watching him play, um, there's a fearlessness to his game mm-hmm. that reminds me of a freshman Devo and also like a like a JD Note type. The way he just gets downhill and uh, he's just so crafty. The way he, and he'll finish above the rim now, like he'll he'll put it on your head, uh, but he can really finish with that left. Yeah. Um, high off the glass, just a lot of familiarity there with his game that I that I really appreciated watching him. Uh, seems like a bit of a firecracker. Um, I I like Deshane Montgomery, and 
knowing that Muss is the guy who made the first contact, he's he's one I think we need to pay attention to. I know. I think you're right. I mean, put up twenty point at least twenty points in nine games this year, and looking at his shot chart, you mentioned the fearlessness, sixty nine percent at the rim. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. that's fearless for for a year one. To no be doubt, getting to the rim like that, just not really giving a crap who's <laughs> who's standing in the <laughs> yeah, way. Man. <laughs> um, it's probably it's. I think it's a mix of that and like he's just he's gifted enough to just get there, right? You know what I mean? So oh yeah, he's really he's shifty. Got a high he's he's got a little bit of a Caleb battle to him off the bounce. Like sometimes Caleb battle is going just full speed downhill and then he just stops on a dime behind the back dribble and then finishes with the opposite hand. Mm -hmm. And I saw this dude do that several times um, on the tape. Now, sometimes battle will do it and he get ripped and you're like, why? Um, but he's, he's got a little bit of that to him. Uh, I don't know. There's something about this kid that I really, really like. And if you look at his initial contact list, like a lot of people really, really like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, a, a nice player and, and one that's got my attention for sure. He was, uh, he's, 86th nationally in steal percentage. Give you some, some stuff on defense. Good, and yeah, and he and if you go look at, go to NationalStateSports.com and look at our big board, and if you go to DeShane, uh, click on the highlights and just and watch that tape. And the shot chart stuff is awesome too. Uh, but if you want to see him in action, click on those highlights. And this the place we pull these highlights from is really good about mm -hmm. Identifying like what guys do well and showing you clips of that, but also like if you have a weakness, like they'll show you clips of that too, which I appreciate. <laughs> and like he turns it over too much right now, which is what yeah. you're gonna get from a freshman who has the ball in his hands a lot. Yep. Um, but they they keep it real, and that's why we really enjoy those highlights. But yeah, the dude gets in passing lanes and gets deflections and gets open floor dunks like crazy. So fun player to watch. I like him. Um, another guy that we mentioned yesterday was Brandon Johnson out of East Carolina. Um, Vance Jackson's twin, uh, and we only say that because they have the exact same build. And yeah. Vance Jackson went to East Carolina after yeah. he was at Arkansas. You talked, you talked me into the Vance Jackson thing, and <laughs> yeah. it was so money, dude. Because it's yeah. it's kind of like the slow but smooth jumper release. Mm -hmm. um, I initially had Jalen Graham with a jumper, um, which also fits. It, it's he's Vance. It's Vance Jackson. There we go. You yeah, you talked me into it. It was. Yeah, it was a pretty easy decision. I just put build, think Vance Jackson. Um, this dude has range, yes. people. Brandon Johnson has NBA range. Like it again. Like go check out the the highlights. Um, I think he made like sixty five threes on the season, and uh, he put yeah one hundred and seventy eight three point attempts. This dude is letting it eat from like deep. Yeah. To the point where, as a defender, you almost feel a little crazy about closing out that. And you could see yeah. that a lot. Like, a defender would be thinking about closing out, but it's like, oh, no, he needs to take at least another step in before I go out there. Nah, he's like he's pulling up and knocking it down. Yep. Uh, really love that. But there's more to his game. Like, he's he's a big, strong kid, uh, rebounds it at a high clip. He's, he was dunking it, you know, in there in the post and, and mixing it up and playing with some physicality. Uh, he is a lot better than maybe I initially thought when I just saw him yesterday. Yeah. Um, and Arkansas has been in contact with him. And, you know, I, I think if you missed out, I don't even know if miss is the right word, but if you're not, if you're not in on a Jacob Cruz type of guy anymore, um, this is a dude who might even be a better fit for, for the mm -hmm. way you play at Arkansas. Yeah. Um, I like him. I do too. Yeah. He, um, I'm not wild about the 54% at the rim on a hundred attempts mm -hmm. being a, a kid that size. Um, Top of the key was 20 out of 42. <laughs> right wing was 21 of 51. So those are, buddy, those are good numbers. Yeah. And he is not afraid to to put them up. Um, it's looking at his Ken Palm page too. He's, you know, 3.0% steal rate. Um, pretty good on the glass. He's top 150 in defensive rebound percentage. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's definitely an interesting kid. I was looking through uh, some of the games that, that he put together this year. He had 30 against uh, UTSA, 21 against Wichita State, 20 against Tulane. Those were back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games. Okay. And, I mean, I don't know about you, but I found myself several times this year watching Tulane a little bit because they were yes. fun. Mm -hmm. They were. And that's a really talented athletic team. And Wichita State seems like they've always got kid, kids that are, you know, pretty athletic. Um, he had four steals against Tulane, four against Wichita State in that same stretch. Um 
looking back at his early – oh, I mentioned this to you earlier. He had 12 and 10 against Florida and two steals. That's right, double-double. And yeah. they almost won that back game. Back in December, yeah, right? lost by five. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, nice piece, and I, I think one one for the radar for sure. Oh, another one, Florida Atlantic, 15 and 10. Ooh, gave it to the Owls? Yeah, gave it to Vlad. Gave it to Vlad, okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe a little John L. Davis because John L. Davis can guard so many spots. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. I love it. Okay, so they're, they're your guys that Arkansas has been in confirmed contact with as of 4-12 on, on Tuesday evening. Um, no official contact has been announced here, uh, but a name that I would encourage everybody to get familiar with um, and certainly keep an eye on, Josh Cohen. A big fella out of UMass, 6'10", 220. So, well, I say big fella, tall fella, uh, but kind of in that Trevin Brazil range in terms of, of build. Um, played for Frank Martin at UMass this season. He plays – I feel like he, th- try, he tries to throw his weight around like he's 20 pounds heavier. Yeah. Kind of works for him. that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. He, the, don't, yeah, don't be – I say Trevor Brazil build, but like he plays with significant amount more physicality. Different kind of player than TV. <laughs> and I'll, I'll say this too, and I brought it up when we were watching his film. Um, you you alerted me to his video last night, and watched it and was like, you know, initially like I I don't know. Yeah. This morning watched it again, and the thing that I came away with was he's comfortable looking a bit awkward. Yes. Yeah. That's I feel like that's that might be his build <laughs> for sure. Um, and so for anyone who listened to the first part of that and was like, well, why the hell are we talking about him? Um, there's something there. OK, so just write the name down because you know, it because it could materialize into something uh, a little bit later here. Uh, first team all a 10. And that's a good league. So you don't get first team all a 10 unless you can hoop. Um he was the MEAC Player of the Year when he was at St. Francis. Averaged over 20 points per game there um, a couple years ago. He scored over 1,600 points in his career. Like, you you don't score 1,600 points in your career unless you're a hooper. Uh, he averaged 16-7 and seven last year with UMass. Um, he's going to have some teams that are after him for sure, uh, but this is one that, that I would encourage everybody to get very, very familiar with. Um, his game is below the rim. Scotty called it below the net when we were talking last night. Like, he's not going to rise up and dunk on you. I think it fits. Um, but the dude is crafty. A little bit of – he's not as smooth with it as JG, but it's that kind of guy. Like, footwork and just – he understands angles to get his shots off. Sure. Um, really, really good finisher around the rim. Pretty good in pick and rolls. And, and he's added the three-pointer to his repertoire this year. Uh, hadn't really shot any. I don't think he'd even made one uh, in the first three years of his career, uh, but was knocking that thing down a little bit, at least enough to where you had to respect it uh, last season at UMass. So a, a, a nice player for sure, and, and one yeah. that, uh, you know, maybe could help the Razorback front court next year. And by the way, if you're interested in him, he's on the portal board on our site. Uh, got his highlights and shot chart up there. I accidentally put his <laughs> – last night I accidentally put his photo of him playing – as the shot chart, so sorry. Love that. If you Surprise. were looking and, yeah. and saw that. But, <laughs> yeah, 11 20-plus point games this year, uh, five double-doubles, uh, 6.7 fouls drawn per 40, and shot 214 free throws, finished 70% at the rim. There you go. So you can watch his tape and think he's awkward like I do, finish 70%. Yeah. He's finishing at the rim. He's I, I, I think I said this earlier, but, like, he strikes me as a guy who understands who he is as a player. Yes, and for a, I think he just understands that he's not going to be as athletic or maybe even as strong as some of these other guys. So he's figured out how to get it done. And yeah. it comes with angles and touch uh, and just understanding how to create enough space to get a shot off. And it, yeah, it looks a little bit weird, but it's, it's been highly effective. Yeah. And if you can play for Frank Martin, you can play from us. That's a fact. So there you go. Yeah. Um, okay. Great, great point to cap it. With yeah, him. exactly. And, and to get out of here, like we said at the top, I uh, thought maybe at the end of each of these shows here, especially this week, we could just kind of roll out our just our top five guys that we like, um, you know, at a, at a given position of need for Arkansas. So let's start uh, with the big fellas who are currently available in the portal again as of as of Tuesday afternoon. Um, I have my list of five, but let's start with yours. And I want to see how much overlap that we have. Number one, I have Amari Williams. Okay. You want me to keep going? Give me all five. 
uh, Mikhail Brown Jones. Okay. Malik Dia. Okay. Talked me into that one. Okay. I think I like Terrace Reed. Ooh, from okay. Michigan. Um, and then I don't know if this is Dreamland, but and if it's not Dreamland, it's Brandon Garrison, and Brandon okay. Garrison would be not be number five. Like okay. if, I, if I thought it was, not to say that it's unrealistic, but you know he had the the DNC when he put in went into the portal. Sure, so you don't you don't really know. But you brought up a good point the other day about you know just the uncertainty with their head coach situation. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. If Brandon Garrison is interested, he's he might be number one. Yeah, for me. But right yeah. now, I think it's it's Amari Williams because you need. You need some some beef on the interior, like some size that you haven't had around here in a while. Um, and I'm not going to turn down a, a guy that blocks shots and grabs offensive rebounds and is just a presence. So for sure, I like him a lot. Um, we had four of the five the same. Okay, I Terrace Reed probably wasn't in there, was he? No, but I love <laughs> Terrace. I know Terrace Reed. He's a St. Yeah. Louis kid. Okay, um, that wound up at Michigan, and I just honestly, I kind of forgot that he. Got that he entered the portal, uh, but mine in, in order. I've got I've got Malik Dia number one. Okay. You know how I feel about it. I, oh, yeah. There's something about his game that yeah. I just love. Um, I've got Garrison at two, but I but I feel the same way. Like if if there is interest there, he might he might be number one. Yeah. Um, I've got Williams at three, and I don't think there's much separation with me at all with those top three guys. Uh, I've got Mikael Brown Jones at four, who I think would be a, a hell of a pickup, mm-hmm. and then I went. Javon Porter at five. Okay. Although I don't know if he really fits the mold of big man, but he, like he's six eleven, but he's more of a stretch guy. Like yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's a center. Maybe he's not. Uh, if it wouldn't been him, then I, I probably would have had Cohen on the okay. on that list for me. Yeah. Um, I do want to throw a wild card at you, and and uh, honestly, another guy who might be worth keeping an eye on because of the connections there, uh, Kajani Wright. Out of USC, entered the portal yesterday, 6'9", 235 pounds, former McDonald's All-American. Uh, he has not put up big numbers at USC, but he really, really strikes me as a guy who could thrive with a change of scenery. Mm-hmm. Um, he visited Arkansas in high school, and it was a big-ass deal when it happened. Like, I remember him visiting, and he was like the first five-star that Musk got on campus, and at the time, he was a top-ten prospect. And it was like a huge deal. And Arkansas, you know, made cut after cut, but you kind of thought it's going to be hard to uh, to pry him away from the West Coast. Well, ma- maybe now it's time for him to leave the West Coast. And so I, I think it's something uh, there, and there's a history there. Obviously, he knows the coaching staff. He's been to Fayetteville, knows the campus. Uh, but he was also teammates with Arkansas freshman signee Isaiah Elihim. Hello. They played summer ball together, Sierra Canyon together. Um, so, you know, maybe I don't even know if they're going to pursue it. I haven't asked about it yet, but I mean, there's enough there for me to go, huh? I don't know. Yeah. That's um, good thought. He's a, he's a big dude and obviously a, an incredibly talented guy. Like you don't, I know Arkansas had kind of a tough luck with their McDonald's all American big man this year, but I think this one's a little bit different because mm-hmm. from a, from a being physically ready standpoint, Bay, that's, that was his limitation. Like he just wasn't sure. physically ready. Johnny Wright's been physically ready since he was like 14. So like, so like all that is there. He just, he's got to put it all together. Right. Um, but I, I would not mind at all uh, if Arkansas got involved with that dude. So I, I definitely want to throw him in there, even though maybe he didn't make the the top five that we were talking about. There you go. Yeah, I think I've got Josh Cohen, OLI, outside looking in. There maybe, you go, yeah. Maybe they're yeah. at number six. Yeah. Um, again, like if, if I don't know about Brandon Garrison. Right, same. But what I do know on Brandon Garrison is that on three's got him as the top guy in the portal. So if he's interested, he's one. Like I want to, mm-hmm. I want to be clear about that. I think he's one. Um, and then maybe the rest of my list goes, you know, as it was. Yeah. And then sure. maybe we throw, you know, Josh Cohen down there at, yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. And, and the thing about Garrison, like, and we've talked about him, so we don't have to spend too much time on it, but like his, his stats aren't the sexiest things that you're going to see, but Again, we were talking about a dude who is a true freshman mm-hmm. that wound up starting the whole season at a Big 12 school uh, and made an impact. He's he's good, and uh, I think he's a guy who's got the potential to be um, a professional basketball player and one who's probably going to really, really take off um, as he continues to develop. Really nice player. I have news. Okay. It's uh, big board related. Hey, 
Is he on the other side? Yeah, he's on the other side. Dang it. Tyron Lawrence has entered the transfer portal. Or Tyron plan, Lawrence. Plans to enter the transfer portal. The Vanderbilt boy. Um, Arkansas needs to get on that one. It is 422 as of me saying this. That yep. was three minutes ago. He yep. plans to enter the transfer portal. There you go. And he entered last year. He ultimately wound up going back to uh, to Vanderbilt. I remember, I think it was, I want to say it was Auburn that was highly involved with him. Maybe Georgia. There's a couple of SEC schools there. Um, yeah. I would like I would like for Arkansas to pursue that one. Tyron Lawrence is good now. Yeah, he's very really good. good. Good news. What a way to end it. That's a lot of fun. There you go. I'm <laughs> glad we didn't miss that one before yeah, we got out of here. Exactly. I can't uh, wait to quote tweet the pod and uh, with the with the news that we missed as, as we were uploading. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, it's just a matter of time. Okay, uh, well, we're going to get out of here and um, another another good episode. It was fun. Uh, glad we got to, to throw some some updates out there, and hopefully things start to really, really heat up soon. You know, guys are going to start cutting their list, um, taking visits, committing. All that stuff is coming soon. But uh, I, I feel like today ramped up a little bit from yesterday, mm-hmm. and so I'm sure uh, Wednesday will be a mess. And then, dude, like once teams start dropping out of the tournament beginning on Thursday, like it's really, really going to start to, to pour crazy. on. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Well, again, appreciate everybody for rocking with us. Uh, we are we're thinking about doing one of these live. We just got to find the right time to do it, uh, and it might be a deal where we just you know come in here one evening, uh, you know, and go live after a day has gone crazy. We were, we've kind of been holding out to see, you know, maybe if uh, if somebody pops or there's some big news and we could go live and uh, you know chat about that and some other things. But stay tuned for that, and we'll we'll definitely let you know when it's coming. But uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in and following along as always. If you have any questions or comments that you want to get out there, throw it on the YouTube. Uh, my DMs are open. So like I said, feel free to DM me if you're weird. Um, you know, I, I don't mind a little bit of weird, but don't go don't go crazy on me. Don't get okay. on his bad side. <laughs> I'm going to say that every time you you mention your DMs. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, appreciate everybody. Uh, for Curtis Wilkerson, Scotty Borderline, United States Sports, this has been the pod in the portal. We'll catch you guys soon.